Joe. Thanks for watching another episode of Comfortably Sophisticated. I am still sitting in my daughter's poop chair and drinking a glass of bourbon. Tonight's bourbon, though, is a Jefferson's Reserve. And let me just tell you, this one is tight. It's a good one. Uh, really enjoyed uh, the first sip. So, tonight I want to try to kind of talk a little bit about something that's a little more specific to me. Um, um, talked a little bit about general concepts that I've learned, general things. Um, but this one kind of is the actual premise for how I got this idea of talking about things I learned this year. Because um, it really did end up kind of being the first thing that I, I realized. Um, and so I'll just jump right in here. It's, it's specifically around um, me and my um, trying to be the best that I can be. So when I started riding uh, about 10 years ago, I got into mountain biking, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the past, because of a, a friend who had um, gone down to the shop and, and had borrowed a, a single speed Surly and we went riding in Winona. But I met, um, another friend in a graduate program and he was a avid mountain bike rider and as we became friends um, and as I bought a mountain bike and started riding um, he kind of brought me in uh, to the group that he had been riding with and those guys were fast you know at the time I was thinking those guys were really fast um, and I just got dropped all the time so I was incentivized if I wanted to continue riding with them which I did um, to get faster um, and so over time I did and this is no new concept that if you want to get faster ride with faster riders um, because you're going to just be forced to keep up and, um, and eventually you know you'll get faster you may still not be able to keep up but you will get faster well over the years these guys kept on getting faster themselves and so every time I felt like I'd reach a level with that group uh, you know they'd reach and they'd reach for another level and, and they'd pull up. And um, there's a couple of different things um, that I learned out of that. Um, one, um, when you get faster, when I get faster, that also means that I'm pulling people up as long as they're interested in the, you know, in the same thing. And a lot of the riders that I ride with are all they, they like the group riding aspect of it. And so as we get faster, we pull each other up. Um, and I think that's a really big difference. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Through the progression though, um, a couple of the riders that you know I was riding with started working with personal trainers. You could see that was really paying off. So the seed was planted um, several years ago. But I finally didn't pull the, I didn't finally pull the trigger until July of this past year and started working with Coach Brian on uh, a plan specifically designed for me. You know, I had done pretty well as a Clydesdale rider, doing pretty well in the you know Clydesdale classes for like Iceman and a couple of other you know, races that have that. Um, and then racing expert in general um, classification uh, races. Um, you know, I had gotten a lot faster and was pretty, you know, satisfied with the results that I was getting. Um, always though felt like I could do better. Um, I knew I could go faster. A um, couple different tweaks. Number one, I could lose some weight and that would help immensely. Um, but two, I knew that I knew enough about a training plan uh, to be dangerous. Um, and so Brian helped with that. And so I went into it naively thinking that I was going to find out what I was truly capable of on a bike and as a weekend warrior or, or amateur rider you know it, it it shouldn't have even taken me any time but it took me a little bit of time to realize you know what this is going to be really great but I'm still not going to find out what I'm fully capable of on a bike because I'm not dedicating all of my time to this I mean I'm a husband a father you know friend uh, and most importantly an employee um, you know co-workers that you know depend on me so there's just no way I could focus all of my time on that so I had to kind of back off the expectations of, of what I was hoping to learn 
But if I hadn't taken that step, the interesting thing is, and this goes back to one of my earlier points, I wouldn't have come up with some of these observations. Um, and I've been saying for years to people that riding has always given me two different benefits. One is the health benefit. Um, my health has changed immensely because of my riding. But my mental, um, the mental benefit of riding um, has, I believe I've noticed it. And it comes from one, having more oxygen to the brain, having clearer thoughts. I feel like uh, you know, I process things a lot quicker. So I believe that there's a benefit, you know, just to mental capacity. Um, but also f um, from learning about myself, like it's, it's taught me to take a step back when I push myself further and observe the process and observe how I'm handling the process and then be able to take away some insights from it. And so I wasn't too bummed when I came to the realization that I wasn't gonna find out what I was fully capable of. It was just another process and that was one of the things I learned in the process. I'm glad that I learned that very quickly because it didn't create this immense amount of disappointment at the end of the year um, when I should be celebrating. But it also kind of made me think, you know, uh, there's a, one other thing about me that I have always felt like is important when I'm competing is that like maybe I can spend this time and maximize that time focusing on the encouraging aspect of competing, which I love and I, I really try and, and emulate. And I really try and, and make clear that my competitors are, you know, we're competing on that day, but I truly want the best race for those around me that are riding, even in my class. This year at Iceman, there was the gentleman who took second uh, to me last year. I saw him in the shoot and I, I made it a point and it wasn't to try and say anything. I really walked over and said, hey, I hope you have a great race. I want you to do well. I know that you're gunning for me. Know that I've got you in the back of my mind. Let's use that as encouragement. Let's use that as fuel to just ride our hearts out today. And I meant it. It wasn't meant to get in his head. It wasn't meant to do anything other than to say, do great. I hope you do well. Um, I hope you ride clean, that there's no, you know, flats or crashes or, you know, anything like that. Um, and so I felt like I could really start to focus on being that type of competitor. Um, and I wanted to bring some intentionality to it. Now, along the way, some of my, uh, some of my ways of doing that, like having all of my rides on Strava. Um, I know a lot of riders that, you know, that are, that are serious about racing. Don't put any of their information on Strava. They use it as, um, you know, just to kind of gauge where they're at. They, they record it, but they keep everything private and I kept everything public. Um, some of my friends and even my coach think that's about the equivalent of touching your chamois after a long hot ride. That that's just something you don't do. Um, <laughs> but to me, that's just another a twofold thing. One shows that I'm putting the work into it, but also it kind of throws that out there to say, hey, if you want to get faster, this is what I'm doing. I'm not, ex I'm not, you know, having you copy my routine because that's not going to work for you. But there's a lot of work that's going into this and I'm, I want to encourage you to put the work into it if it's important to you. So I think um, that's, that was a, an interesting observation to me um, and, and it's a, a goal that I have um, to take f into the future. I know I'm, I'm continuing to train with Brian and um, and I'm hoping that I'll have another great year next year and we'll see once where that goes. Um, but um, yeah, um, I'd, love to, uh, I'd love to hear from some of you, um, some of the things that you've learned about your own riding, um, through riding. Um, and so if there's any specific examples that you've got, I'd love to see them in the, in the comments below. Um, and uh, any great stories that, you, that you've experienced
experienced. Um, it would be awesome as well. So until next time, um, I'm going to finish my bourbon and um, stay comfortable. Um, and so thanks for watching another episode of Comfortably Sophisticated.